Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria and today I'll be sharing with you some of our favorite winter activities for active play and hands-on learning. For reference, my daughter is two and a half years old here, but a lot of these activities can be adjusted to be easier or more difficult depending on your child's development. If you are looking for ideas for even younger toddlers, I did put out a winter activities video last year, so I'll go ahead and link that for you as well. Let's start with a couple of art invitation ideas. Now, even though the holidays are long gone for us, the desire to decorate for them is still here. So we're going to be decorating a little Christmas tree. If your child is interested in scissors, go ahead and invite them to help you cut the Christmas tree out. But the main point of this activity is to actually glue the pom-poms to the Christmas tree. You can use sticky dot, tape, a glue stick, or what we're doing here is a glue with a little paintbrush. The grass they need to hold the paintbrush as well as to grab the smaller pom-poms is really great in preparation for writing skills later on. And of course, they get to have a lot of fun and be creative with how they're placing all the different pom-poms and there is some sequencing work here and remembering to put the glue down first before they put the pom-poms on and even easier to set up activity are these little ornament making kits we have the ones for the christmas time but they do have them for pretty much every holiday that comes up this one is really great to do alongside with your child for the child that's interested in tracing this kind of washi tape activity is a great precursor to that i just laminated an outline of what would be a snowflake and gave her a couple of rolls of washi tape having it laminated allowed her to actually peel the tape off if she placed it in a spot that she didn't want it to be. If your child is not able to rip the tape off from the rolls just yet, go ahead and give them the smaller pieces and just tape them to the edge of the desk or an edge of a tray and invite them to simply move the pieces of tape from there onto the piece of paper. Although trying to trace something doesn't sound like a very creative project, she got very creative with what sizes and what types of washi tape she was utilizing. She was incredibly proud of her final result and wanted to frame it in her playroom. And the type of activity that you can easily recreate for any of the holidays that are coming up. Now, if your child is interested in using scissors but they're not quite at the point of cutting through paper especially cutting on the line a great way to start practicing is by actually cutting through pieces of string i fed the string through the opening of one of the trees that we had and this allowed her to really focus on the motion of holding something with one hand navigating the scissors in the other and still get that satisfaction of actually making the cut and seeing how the scissors work probably one of the most exciting parts of the winter time is obviously all of the presents that we get to wrap and unwrap and including our toddlers in that can be a really fun experience for both of us and also wonderful activity for them. A lot of the skills that we're working on with our kids, like their memory, sequencing, fine motor skills, crossing the midline, all of these come into play when we're wrapping presents. There's a lot of dexterity needed in pinching the paper, folding it over, being gentle but still utilizing enough force, and it's a wonderful way to simply bond together. Even when the holidays are done, we can still utilize some of that wrapping paper and simply wrap some of the toys that they have. This is especially great if you're going to be traveling soon. You can go ahead and wrap some of the toys that you're going to be taking with you and they can unwrap them on the plane. And we can utilize the extra pieces of wrapping paper for folding practice. Not only is folding a practical skill that we need, also again, a wonderful way for our kids to work those fine motor skills. I drew lines in different directions. So we were folding some papers horizontally, some vertically and others diagonally. But I realized that having the line there isn't that helpful to a toddler so I actually started drawing dots on the two opposing corners so she was trying to put the dots towards each other and that really helped her grasp the concept of folding the paper in half. We can also get pretty creative with some play-doh or modeling clay. Let's look at all the different learning that we can do with just building snowmen. Getting the balls rolled to build the snowman with is going to require a lot of fine motor skills. If we work on building as tall of a snowman as possible, also going to encourage our kids to be very careful and work a lot of their dexterity and also work on balancing the pieces together. Then we can discuss which piece is short and which piece is tall. And if the child is ready, we can discuss short, medium, and tall. We can also work on lining them up from shortest to tallest. And of course, for the child who's interested in counting, we can count as we build up these snowmen. If your child is interested in counting, we've been loving this little snowman activity. I've got a line for where each of the pom-poms would go for the corresponding number that's on their hat so that she still has that control of error and gives her that opportunity to see that abstract number of one or a two alongside the concrete, which is the number of pom-poms. Another fun counting variation are these mittens and clothespins. Simple DIY, I just drew circles on the mittens for her to count and I have clothespins with the corresponding numbers for her to attach. This time I drew the circles in the odd and even pattern that we use with cards and counters in Montessori math. Even though we're not talking about odd and even numbers just yet, she's slowly seeing that pattern. As a control of error, I did write the number of circles on the back of the mittens, but you'll notice that because we only have five clothespins and five mittens, she was actually able to self-correct without even checking on the back. And all that play with clothespins and mittens got us really inspired to actually go ahead and hang some of her mittens on the clothesline. I tried many different options and in the end, putting a string between the legs of our easel seems to be the best DIY option for a clothesline. 
This is an activity that requires a lot of patience and coordination of using both hands as well as fine motor work. We've also been using our mini colored clothespins for some color matching, but you can of course use larger ones if that's what your child is comfortable with. With Valentine's Day around the corner, I put different colored heart stickers on the bottom of this egg carton and so she matched the clothespins to the corresponding sticker on the edge of the egg carton. If your child has been interested in trying to trace but they can't trace yet with a crayon or a marker, you can try tracing with stickers. Definitely make the activity bigger than what I've got here. Essentially printed out outlines of different winter themed items and gave her some dot stickers. We eventually switched to the larger dot stickers but she was still using the little cards which didn't work out too well either. Point is she's trying to navigate her hand to be exactly where the line is which is great hand eye coordination that she needs to eventually be ready for tracing. And of course simply navigating the stickers is wonderful fine motor work as well. So our Valentine's Day themed option worked out a lot better so I have a larger heart with some larger stickers. These were Valentine's Day dinosaur stickers from the Dollar Tree. This was a lot easier for her to navigate and get the dinosaurs just right on the outline. Now with the changing seasons we of course noticed a change in scenery and that got us interested again in our animals and habitat sorting activity. Stella is very familiar with the safari animals so we compared those to polar animals and eventually we also introduced farm animals. You'll see I have a book for each of the habitats as well and this is something that we reference first before we do the activity. And when we started I also selected animals that were also within the book so she could go back to check and self-correct that way. This is especially helpful for animals like zebra who looks more like they would be a polar animal but actually lives in the safari. This also obviously lends itself to a lot of pretend play especially when we put animals into the wrong habitat and pretend that they're super cold or really hot. If your child is interested in sorting, we can also sort all types of winter related items. Make a lot of different variations to this, either a small versus big sorting, rough versus smooth, or what we're doing here is actually small, medium, and large. The concept of being medium sized is actually something that's not so simple to understand. So make sure your child is first very comfortable sorting between large and small items before introducing the small, medium, and large. A simple matching activity can be a wonderful way to introduce a new concept, like a new holiday, all the language that comes with it to your child. This little matching activity I made for the Korean Lunar Year has been a great way for Stella to understand more of some of the traditions associated with this holiday. For the child who's interested in colors, if they've mastered basic color matching, we can move on into a color gradation. Of course, around Christmas time, we had the red and the green ones out but of course change this to be whatever your child is interested in and while this activity is great because it allows the child to continuously practice that grip that they need for holding a pencil you can also simply diy this I made this larger version with the paint swatches at a local hardware store and obviously make this simpler by using less of the colors i kept one of the sheets intact so she had it as a control of error to look back at later when we first tried this she was able to separate the lights from the darks but she wasn't necessarily going in the gradation from lightest to darkest the next go around i asked her which one is the lightest in the group every single time she put down a paint swatch i asked her which one is the lightest now all the way through the the darkest color and this really helped her figure out how to gradate the colors from lightest to darkest. While all these curated activities are great for working specific skills, something that we're doing most often, especially during the winter, is spending time together in the kitchen. With a lot less places to be and more family holidays, really encourage you to spend a bit more time with your child simply exploring the kitchen, just getting messy with them. I've been relying more on drawing visual recipes for us to follow and also introducing some new concepts, some new gadgets, and some new steps for us as we explore new recipes and new ways for us to bond in the kitchen. Another common practical life activity in the winter time is going to be decorating for the holidays. Now while the holidays are done for this year, something to consider for next year is to allow your child to help you decorate the tree or better yet, get them their own little tree with little decorations that are not going to be fragile. This way they're able to get that excitement and energy out of getting to touch and decorate the Christmas tree, but it's also something that's safe for you to redirect them to. Another fun fine motor activity to consider is making little snowmen out of marshmallows on a little toothpick. Definitely supervised, but it's a fun alternative to the basic threading toys that we have and also provides a different sensorial experience. For the child interested in water, we can also do some pipette water transfer into a chocolate mold like this, getting ready for Valentine's Day. The challenge with this one is that once we're done, we actually need to use that pipette to get the water out of the chocolate mold back into the container on the left as well. We're of course working a lot of sequencing and remembering all the different steps. We're working from left to right, getting the water into the mold, which is an important pre-literacy skill. And we're also working that same pincer grasp that they need later to hold a pencil. And although it's not necessarily always sunny in the winter time there are a lot of fun sunglasses out during the holiday seasons and cleaning sunglasses is a really fun practical life activity as well not only are they working their hand strength in getting the spray bottle to work but they're also coordinating using both of their hands if you saw my fall activities video which can also be adapted for a lot of winter time activities you may remember the apple tasting activity that we did in the winter we did a citrus tasting activity I grabbed whatever type of citrus i could find in the store i cut them up so she could see inside each fruit gave her a little slice to try and two bowls one that was going to be for fruits that she enjoyed and ones that she wasn't a fan of. This is a very simple, low-pressure way for your child to experience new foods, new flavors,
flavors and new tastes. And as a bonus, because we already did the parts of an apple activity, she was really excited to see some very familiar things like a rind and seeds and the citrus fruits as well. A different type of sensorial exploration is the different temperatures, the thermic sense. We can set up a simple DIY version of thermic bottles. I definitely recommend having bottles that can actually be closed on top. While Stella was able to navigate these, it definitely would have been a lot simpler if they were just closed. For a much younger child, we can simply use this as a chance to explore the difference between warm, hot and cold water. Obviously make sure the hot water is still not dangerously hot. For the child who is sorting, we can provide them with blue and red for cold and hot and have them sort out the bottles that feel cold and the bottles that feel hot. And again, within the hot, I actually had water that went from lukewarm to just very warm, but nothing that was going to be dangerous. And if your child is up for the challenge, we can invite them to then sort the bottles from the warmest to the coldest. Of course, one of the best ways to experience all of those changes in temperature is to actually just get outside and really allow your child to see and touch and experience what the outside is during the winter time, especially if you have snow, letting them actually look at the snowflakes up close or hold the snow in their hands and see it melt away. They are going to remember experiences like this so much more than if we're simply to tell them about snow melting. And if you get to experience the joy that is cleaning a driveway from snow, your child may very well be interested in imitating and doing the same. They may also run away with the shovel and simply start digging in the snow like it's a giant sandbox, but the intention is still there. And for the days when we simply can't spend enough time outside, we can bring the snow inside. And while there's all types of sensory bins and activities that you can set up with the snow, some of which I talked about in last year's winter activity video, this year our absolute favorite activity has been to hide some of the animals in the snow, get a bowl of warm water and dump the animals from the snow into the water and see the snow melt off of them immediately. This inevitably results in shovels full of snow going into that warm water bowl to see what happens which becomes all the more interesting when suddenly the snow stops melting because the temperature of the water has dropped enough to keep the snow cold. And while the child is seeing all of this happening, we don't need to narrate or explain much. Simply seeing and experiencing this is the most important part. We can also paint the snow either with paint brushes or in this case, I simply colored some water and gave her a pipette she really enjoyed simply getting all of the different colors onto the snow with the pipette and seeing all of the different colors mixed this way as well. And while sensory bins aren't actually Montessori, especially if they don't have a closed end to them, they are something that we sometimes incorporate in our home. Now that she's older, Sal has been a bit more interested in actually exploring the sensory bins. So I put this one together for Valentine's Day from random items that I found in the Dollar Tree. Because she's very interested in sorting, she immediately went to work and started sorting out all of the different items that she saw. So she put flowers into one bowl, the flower petals into another, the duckies into the next. To make this more Montessori, you could actually give your child a sheet of all the items that you've hidden in there, have them match the items like the hearts and the ducks to the corresponding picture on the sheet. So I hope this has given you some activity ideas for the winter time with your little one. As always, I hope you stay safe.